game. Yeah, yeah. So, listen, Mo has got uh, a new lease on life. He's playing. He wasn't playing much with the Heat. Now he's playing with the Kings, and he's got an opportunity to show his skill set. So, next, miss footing. De'Aaron Fox casually bringing the ball up here, then hesitates here and blows by Dennis Smith Jr. Malika, have you ever seen a hezzy ankle breaker like this? Oh. I mean, I watch Kyrie every day, so, <laughs> you know, it, there, there's been stuff like, like that. that. You know, I, I see them in Barclays Center every once in a while, but this is what he does, right? This is what he does. That's that's filthy. That's gross. You should go oh. apologize after that. That is, that's really embarrassing. And you know what? You got to just pretend mm. that you, like, pulled a quad. <laughs> you got to be like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get out of the wheelchair. <laughs> you didn't just blow, blow behind me like that. <laughs> that ooh. would be like, oh, I'm man, sorry, my bad. Man. Well, you know, it's funny. You mentioned football earlier. That's what they do. Yeah. The, the receiver always grabs the hamstring, I'm right? I'm in hurt. those situations. We got to take <laughs> our cues Jimmy from Butler football. Acting lessons. Right there, for sure. Next, make creativity. Bucks, Mavs, Notre Dame alum, Pat Connaughton throws a pass that bounces off Maxi Kleba, but finds its way to Bobby Portis, who had a huge game. Ramona, you think this was intentional? No, come on now. Bobby was just a little slow getting through there. He, look, he, Bobby actually stops. Okay, you see, he stops before that pass comes in. Yeah. He's, instead of driving to the rim, because it was a little late on the pass, and he's a little late diving to the rim. But okay, works out. Okay, called it. Yeah. Well, let, let Planet Pat take a little bit of credit for him. If he wants to say, yeah, I planned all that, just, just let him have it. Just let him have this one. Just be like, all right, sure, that's fine. We'll just go with that. By the way, again, the Portis signing has been a really good one for the Bucks. I just want to make sure we reiterate yeah. that. All right, let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets. After missing 23 games with a hamstring injury, Kevin Durant came off the bench for only the second time in his career on Wednesday to drop a cool 17 points in just 19 minutes, where he was perfect from the field. So the Nets ended up routing the Pels and are currently a half game up on Philly for the top spot in the East. So let's take a look at KD and his absurd effectiveness when he's been healthy this season. Look at that. That's just crazy. So Malika, what's yeah. the Nets plan here to get KD back to full strength? Well, they were very cautious in bringing him back from his rehab into games, and they were slowly, slowly, slowly ramping him up, George. They're now going to be applying that same ramp-up kind of technique in games. So Kevin Durant told me that the reason why he came off the bench is that he is on a minutes restriction. He's going to be on a minutes restriction for the next couple of days, he said. And he also said that I'm going to be playing these weird minutes and in these weird rotations before I'm getting back to what you would normally see my workload as. Has. But the reason why they didn't just bring him off the bench, he didn't play the entire first quarter and the first several minutes of the second quarter. It's he, they wanted to make sure that if they needed him in a close contest down the stretch, they wouldn't have burned all of his minutes. Because as you said, they're only a half game up on Philadelphia. They know what's going on and what this stretch of the season means to them. They're eyeing those standings. They want the number one seed, even if they don't talk about it publicly all the time. This is a team that hasn't shied away from the fact that they want to win. And so so for the next few games, Kevin Durant is still going to be on a minutes restriction. He's still going to be playing in a different role maybe than he would normally play. But that's intentional so that they can make sure that they have him available if they get in a tight spot late in games. That's an excellent, that's an excellent point about not starting him so that he can be there at the end. Because I, I feel like I've done this show so many times where a star player is on a minutes restriction. They are not able to play in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter or in overtime. Right. We go, oh, did the coach make a mistake? Should they have left him in yeah. there? Right? Yeah. Should they have ignored the minutes restriction? It's happened a few times with Zion last year. Oh, my God. Well, okay. All we did was talk about that All with Zion. we did. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a, that is a sophisticated <laughs> way of approaching the minutes restriction, Brooklyn. Um, you know, Malika, I, I thought your report during the game where, like, he, he's not there because they needed he needed more space on the sideline to, to warm up. That's I mean, funny. that was crazy watching that game. Going like, when is he coming in? Yeah. When is Kevin Durant? Is he going to play? I mean, the, the, they really had a good poker face about if he was going to start, how many minutes he was going to play. Like, that was – and I think it's easier mm -hmm. to do in the non-in-person um, media access world. Uh, but obviously, this is what sure. the standard is going to be for the Brooklyn Nets with all of their injured players because – They've kind of entrusted it to the player all year long. You know, in the in right. beginning with Kevin coming back, he played a lot of minutes coming off that Achilles. Same thing with him and James when they had the hamstring injury. They played pretty quickly afterwards. Both re-injured it. Now the Brooklyn Nets are mm -hmm. taking that Spursian view of things. Sure, sure. Now let me ask you this because 
Look, I, clearly this Nets team has more firepower than mm -hmm. the team I'm going to talk about. But last year, the Clippers, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot about they only sure. played 12 games together, right? And then in the playoffs, oh, it'll, yeah. it'll work itself out. You'll, it'll, they'll figure it out. And it didn't happen. So, Ramona, how worried are you about the whole they haven't played enough games together thing? Yeah, you know, there was a stat last night going around that the the only, they're, they only played seven games together, right? The only team that's won a championship where their top two players played with the fewest amount of games that they played together was 10. Right. Okay, 10. Or the right. top three players was 10. So they, they need to get some on court time, but these guys are so good. Yeah. And, and we forget, like, they have been playing together. They play Team USA together. They, they know each other's games. They, they sort of play a positionless style of basketball. They're still experimenting with things. And the Eastern Conference is a place where the top three teams are here and everybody right. else is down here. I think they're going to have, they're going to be able to mm -hmm. have some time to figure this out on the fly in the playoffs, as long as they're all healthy. So you're saying the, the conference is the biggest yeah. difference. Okay. Yeah. Malika? Well, and, and that's something that the Nets have said. Steve Nash has said to me, ideally, in an ideal world, we would have been playing all season, to, all season long together. If some first-year teams don't win, sometimes it's for no re reason other than the fact that they haven't been battle-tested together as a group. And so he's acutely aware of that. He knows that at this point, it's sort of like we're going to have to deal with what we're going to have to deal with because this is the hand that we've been dealt. I asked Kevin Durant about this after last game, and he said that he's pretty confident just based on the way that these guys all play. The fact that he said, you know, we're, we're all, like Ramona said, we're positionless players. We're going to be able to build chemistry quickly. James Harden is, is very key to that. But the thing about that seven games is, remember, one of them was that strange game against Toronto where Kevin Durant was in the game, then out of the game, then in the game, and out of the game. That That's like six and a half games. And then also that was before LaMarcus Aldridge was added. That was before Blake Griffin was added. And we know that they are seeing uh, a lot of minutes. They're key players right now. DeAndre Jordan is not currently playing for Brooklyn. LaMarcus Aldridge has, has come in for those minutes. So they're going to to need some time. They've talked about that, especially because this is a team that doesn't really practice. They're learning together on the court. It's something that's in Steve Nash's mind. It's something that he said he wouldn't be concerned about. And I think that they've earned the benefit of the doubt here because of the firepower they have, because they've been able to answer every, if not all questions, most, if not all questions thus far, they probably deserve saying, okay, they're going to have some time to figure this out. They're probably going to figure this out, but in an ideal world, it wouldn't have come down to this. It's going to be fascinating. Certainly something to keep an eye on for sure. And we'll all do that. Malika, thank you for hanging out with us today. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. You got it. All right. Coming up after the break. We've got the latest on Victor Oladipo and his early exit versus the Lakers yesterday. Don't go anywhere. You're watching The Jump.